Good morning, my friends. It's Rachel here, and we are just going to work on this journal here. Um, the other ones, I have stitched their signatures in. I'll stitch this one in with you guys, just for those who are new. If you're, if you're um, not new to it, you can just fast forward a little bit, and you know this process. So I'm just going to show you what I'm very excited. What I put inside the journals is. Ta da Do you recognize? It's my fabric. So basically, I got um, some fabric from another company. I like the colors. It's a bit more faded out. Um, not quite as intense as the colors on the ones that I am getting done. Um, but I didn't like the fabric. It's a it's a thicker, stiffer sort of um, cotton linen mix, and I didn't really like it um, as a fabric to stitch. However, I do like it on the inside as of the covers, and you'll see how pretty it looks with... Um, the pages stitched in I'll show you that afterwards so what I'm going to do is I flipped it round uh, like this and I'm going to put my markings on this side doesn't matter if I make a boo-boo here because um, because I need to look at four cent I did them all four centimeters so uh, this will be covered up so it doesn't matter if I make a any mistake so I just put two markings at two centimeters which is half I grab this ruler and just um, because it's got lines, I can kind of line it up on the edge there and just draw a line down there. And then what I can do in this one, I'm just going to do two squares and draw my other line for the other signature. That's where the other signature is going to be stitched. And then here, why did I flip that round like that? I've got a bit of a reflection here from the window. I'll have to stand up. I can't see. It's reflecting off the transparent ruler, Perspex ruler, and it's it's blocking my vision, which is not good. Now you could use this um, to do the find the halfway point. I'm not going to just again because of the um, I'm standing up, guys, because of the reflection. So I just use my ruler. Now this is 25 centimeters, so that really would be my height. Just make sure it's there gone that one so 25 centimeters is 12 and a half so put one there that's where I'm gonna put my holes there and then I like to do two and a half centimeters sometimes I do two if the books a bit shorter but this one's a bit taller these are all a bit taller so I did all two and a half centimeters there and I don't even measure these I just eyeball those ones it works out in the end as long as they're not totally off and there we go so now I can take my Japanese screw punch this one and probably with two or three pushes I can punch my hole because it's just fabric and tape and it's a nice soft spine and you'll see with the other ones how flat they lie although I have um, on those ones I two of them I have already done the covers which I'll share with you very simple and I'm going to do these two covers with you just to so we go a bit faster. I know we like to see covers. So I've just popped some of those out. Now, um, this is quite a Japanese screw punch. It just does a very neat hole. Look at that. Love it. And um, and I enjoy using it. Now, when I first used to use it, I used to put way too many pages in my signatures. Like, And my journals would end up, by the time I put my pockets in and everything, I'd have absolute gator mouths. And, and then imagine the person using it and adding things, even more with Gator Mouth. So um, I can't remember how many we put in here. Probably nine pages did we do or maximum ten, eight or nine or ten or something. Now what have we got here? If I can't figure out the, the inches, I'll flip it round to centimetres because I understand those better. So 9.8. So half of nine is 4.5 plus four. So 4.9 is about my centre. When in doubt just pop up there and check yes that seems to be okay and then I do I've got to do two and a half I'm looking at the five there and then so I need to go to seven and a half there so two and a half from the center and that is my front signature now if you can't punch your holes with your Japanese screw punch with one two three see it's there out then you've got probably got way too many pages so um, one lady told me that she had bought one and she really didn't enjoy using it. I have a feeling that probably was because there were too many pages because it is very unpleasant to use. 
if you have more a lot more pages in it so i do use it when i have like i might do a soft covered um journal which i'm i will be working on some not on camera but i'm going to have one big signature what i'll do is i'll start putting my holes in with this and then i'll finish it off with the book all because really it is a nightmare because it won't go through um too many pages now this one is 9.6 they all are very slightly different it doesn't matter so four and a half plus three 4.8 i can count one one two three no that's nine you see, I don't understand the inches. Let me just turn it around. So I said 9.6. So I need one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. I didn't understand that side. That side was doing my head in. Okay. And there. I like that. I just like the distance that the two and a half inches gives me. That's why I like to measure it with my inches. Okay, I can only just see that hole there. It's not very hard work at all when you just have... See, I only had to do two pushes and my, my things came out. Now, which way is the up? That way. So I've got to put it there. So I'm just putting them on the side, flipped over, because I'm when I stitch in, I'm stitching this last signature in first. It's just easier because if you stitch from the first signature in, then you will be uh, messing about trying to figure with the, if things are upside down or not. Whereas this way, I can put them in right way up and I start from the back. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is why. Now, quite often I'm asked, where did I get these? Now, I've just got to remember I flipped that around. Um, I get asked where did I get these paper clips from. They're just good because they catch. If something's shorter, they catch it all. See? Um, put that back around that way. So I've got it up. And I'm a lefty, so I think I keep I keep everything the right way up that way when I'm working. I don't know if that's because I'm a lefty or if that's other people would do that. So again, 9.3. So that means 4.8. There. And then I need to do my two and a half and my two and a half, which is here. Okay. Now, if you make a boo-boo with your holes, you just might add in another page and cover them up and re-measure them. I, I even did that with you guys once. Okay, so these are my signatures. This is the middle one. That's the first one. I'm putting them down like that over there. This is my last signature. This is my book. This is the right way up over here, right way up over here. And plonk it there, and I'm going to stitch. Now, I don't want to have my tails on the inside because I'm gluing fabric on the outside so that can cover them up. So I'm going to start. If I want my tails, you know, the end of this, on the inside, I need to go in that way. But because I want them on the outside because they're going to be covered, I want to go start from underneath if that makes sense you've seen me do it a million times we do it pretty much well, it depends how long a journal takes me to make but every few months we're doing this and then go down the top or bottom whichever way you want it's the same then in that one in the right one yes in there just pull it and now we want to go back into the center. I'm using a blunt needle so that way I don't split my thread because you need to be able to tighten it. And if you go in through that or that thread there with a sharp needle, you won't be able to tighten it. It'll be stuck. Now that's way too long. I don't like wasting my wax thread. So I'm just going to pull this and shorten it. Pull that one. Now we need to pull it really tight. I'm just going to trim this off. You don't want swinging signatures. Although this is going to have glue, so it will fix it a little bit more. So you just pull it as tight as you can. Nice thing about wax thread is it holds, it sticks to itself. Trim that off and we're ready for the next one. Take those off. I think I'll put those away straight away. Where's the other one? Yeah. Try to put my little tin down here. And 
grab this one. So yeah, I went ahead and stitched in the other ones. You don't need to see me stitch in signatures in four journals. It might become a little bit repetitive, but can you see how pretty this is looking with these digitals? Because of course our digitals kind of all mix and match. I don't know after you get the first one and it kind of is a bit less fiddly for some reason now which side i like to have my so i've got this towel is on that side of this string here and that one i want on the opposite side so when you're tying it it's not going to be lifting because you're going to tie it closed i just try to minimize my wastage And even so, I still end up chopping off quite a bit because you need to leave your towels a little bit long so you can, you know, have some strength to tie the knot. Okay, and then we've got our last signature to do. Let's move the ruler. We don't need the rulers now. Put those out of the way. Oh, loving it. Yes, I am. Put those away. Don't need any of this. correct way oh look at that terrible cutting the scissors did I might not be able to thread that oh yes I can because it's a tapestry needle it's very good right so don't need that anymore so go in the center open up your signature in the center again so you can go that way. I just naturally go that way. I don't know why. And that one. So this is just the three hole pamphlet stitch. I've actually never ventured and done the five, five hole one. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I, you know, I find this works perfectly well. So why go and complicate things? Just gonna pull that. That needs to be on that side. Okay. Nice and tight. Put that away. And put this away. I keep it in this little thing so I can kind of spot it. Sometimes I can't see for looking, but I can kind of spot it a little bit easier in my tin. There we go. And that is that bit. So we can get rid of the mat, which is a bit slippery. And I like to, oh, I didn't put those away. I like to just, when I've stitched the signature in, I like to just go through and check. Because you're still in time to, uh, you know, pull one out and um, redo it if you've done something wrong. And I like to just sort of run my hand and make sure everything's good. And it's nice soft spine, so it's just sort of sitting nice and flat at the moment. Just get everything moving. And then the fun can start. I have nothing, really not, not a lot of stuff that I can put in these at the moment, especially as far as tags and things, but we'll get there. I will do some making off camera as well, just, you know, basic making sort of thing. I'm just, so just random. This is one of our hinged pages with the extra things and stuff. So you can see they do get used. Don't worry about that. It's an opportunity to put something there and cover it up. love it love it love it love it okay so that's that right so what are we going to put on the spine well i just wanted to bring this one out. let me just show you the other ones quickly i'm not going to go through them all this one i've kind of decided what to put on the spine on it because look we've got all this damage and i i nearly did it off camera but i thought i should really show you doing that one um 
how you know I didn't want to throw it out it's still a nice cover so um, we're going to cover 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 that bit up so just again I put that fabric in I won't go through it all but um, just want to show you in between the signatures it's super pretty and so that's that one and that's going to go we'll do that one in a sec I just want to show you the Italian ladies I've already done their covers I did beautiful um, upholstery fabric just a bit of ticking and some batten, Battenberg lace and that's already stiffer I'm, it's still drying so I don't want to open it too much but look how pretty that is they're going to be gorgeous and I'll just quickly go to the back so you can get the gist and that's that side there and that's the back of that one um, and then this one I used another brocade sort of fabric and ticking I have to have a bit of ticking that's old mattress ticking and this fabric again inside which I absolutely love so that's those they're still drying I don't want to muck around with those because um, they need to dry and we're going to do these ones so because this one is really um, it's coming off I'm just going to slide some glue under there although you won't notice because I'm going to have fabric going over as well so it'll probably be a bit hard to leave that off we're going to use that to glue down probably won't stay it looks to me like that might be a bit of parchment you know hide so it's a bit stiff but anyway I thought I would glue this on here I wanted to glue it that way but I realized I had left oh I could do it like that actually I could move it over a bit and up like that that'll do I'm going to glue that on I'm just going to put a whole lot of glue stick So sometimes I glue it on the wrong side and then I'm forced to put it on the other way, the opposite to what I wanted. Now I'm using my glue stick. It's a very strong glue stick. If you don't have a really good strong glue stick, then you might want to use a stronger wet glue, but not too. Well, this is kind of thick, this paper, but if your paper's not thick, you don't want all the crinkles. I'm going to put an embroidery on this one because these are botanicals. So I want that to go right up there. Maybe slide it over just a tiny bit. And that's going to cover up that faux pas. Now, I'm just going to grab it. My other wet one has dried and it's full of glue anyway, so we'll get a new one. I will re-wet my wet ones if they're not all really stiff and gluey. But if they are, are um, if they are stiff and gluey I won't use them again now I need to cut my fabric here and so what I'm going to do is just crease it like this and get my scissors it's not going to be perfectly straight but that's not how I roll is it I like doing this okay take that bit off this is a nice thick linen-y sort of fabric and it's too tall, but I need to, um, I kind of would like to keep that. So here, I just need to sort of, again, fold it to get my crease. Okay. And then I'm going to glue this and it's see on the spine it's going to have this bit of lovely embroidery now oh wait before I do that I need to put some paper there and I think I might just come in again with this paper just take that off want the bit with the red or without the red maybe even less think like that I'm going to just glue that there maybe up a bit like that okay so let's get that done so how is everyone today lately I just get right into it and don't even ask you how you all are it's very rude of me the midday bells are going I'm late today I because I've been sitting here getting going with this and um, and then my sister called 
and so here I am at midday. I have another video to record today because we're releasing our we're we're releasing our new Roxy's Journal of Stitchery project. Well, we're just announcing it, making our announcement of what it's going to be, and I need to get my video done for that as well. And actually, that video will already be up by the time you watch this. But not everybody watches that one because that's a, that's about stitching. Only the stitches watch that one, which is just perfectly fine. We always have a little consultation video <laughs> before. I mean, we talked about it already, and we're like, yeah, 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 okay, we know what we're doing, and then we, I, then I got a message. I forgot what we're doing. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a me thing to do. I, I couldn't quite remember either but anyway we've figured it out if you are oh no because you will already send it because that's going up there so I won't even bother don't even bother Rachel Just glue that down you can always come and add something else here I feel like it could need something else but I'm not going to make those decisions someone else can make that decision so that's the back and then this is going on the front but then we're going to have something else now Let's do this bit first. See, that's going to glue those um, signatures in there as well. The, you know, where they're tied, they're going to be nice and glued in. I'm going to smush it a little bit. I don't want big, too much blobby sort of glue oozing out of my fabric. Good thing it's non-toxic, my glue. Well, that's what they say, so it should be. Okay, so that's already on the spine. And I don't really want to be opening it until it dries. And then here I'll have to work it out. I'll just do a bit and then I'll add more after. Okay. See how they get so much glue in them when you're doing covers. So I need to put, add more glue that I've glued to there. And then I lift this and just smoosh the glue again. And then I might need to lift it again just a little bit. And there I've got it. I should have it by now because that already felt like it was glued down. Yes. Oh, I love that. That didn't do, didn't do too badly with that. And now... What I thought I might like to add to this one, I can come back and add more if I want to, but I really love this piece. I absolutely love it. it came off something, hand towel. It's a beautiful piece of textural woven hemp with ruffly bits, and I just thought I might like that up there. But now that I've trimmed that down, see, I would have to cover up the red. I think I might, you know what's missing? <laughs> Have a guess, guys, before I show you. What is it missing? I know those of you who know me, you know what it's missing. And here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm not quite sure how wide I want it or how big I want it. I can tear multiples because I can always use it somewhere else. <gasps> here it is. And I love it. I don't know. It's just a very special stripe to me. I just love it. I mean, it's very humble stripe because it belongs to the, you know, they put them on the, the mattress sticking. It's a mattress sticking is what it is. No. Nope. Let's see. I need to hold it up. I kind of like it, but it's not quite doing it for me. Maybe I don't want this. Maybe I prefer... Of this, have a little piece of this. Maybe I prefer that to go that way. And put that. That's it. Okay, so you don't give up until you figure out what you want. So to take that off, put it over there. See that that paper ripped off the um. The, the cover is for me just another opportunity to add something else whereas I might you know if it's in good condition I'm not going to put anything else on there am I I'm just gonna have the the cover 
but because I had a big piece of the marbled paper ripped off, I was like, okay, well, I can put, I'm not going to throw that out. It's a perfectly fine cover. The rest of it's good. It's old. Why would I, why would I throw that out? I can stick something over it. That's that one. And then where was I putting this here? So this one, I'm going to just have it on here like this and sort of eyeball where to put it. Now I will smooth that out. I may need more. I think I've thinned it out a bit too much. Stick it down where it's got glue. I use the card because there's glue oozing through and if you use your finger, it sticks to your finger and lifts off again. And I just go around where there's not enough glue or I didn't put any glue. Most of these areas I didn't have any glue whatsoever and just add it where it needs to go. You want it to be glued down as best you can because it is the cover. And I do just smush off a little bit of the glue that's oozing out the edges just so it's not there. It dries and I love that. Okay, good. So that's number one, cover number one, done perfectly happy with that. I'll put that over there to dry and now I need to think about this one. I did pull out some embroideries. I had to make my decisions about that one first before I usually like to share my decision making process. This belonged to this journal. Um, but that one sometimes you know you just really need to muck around a bit before the video goes on because I'm just not quite sure what I'm doing. It's just a little bit harder. Now this is not going to be tall enough this one so I'm not going to use that although I could cut something out of it throw that out of the way that's a stiff one that's a stiff one I had I did pull out this one I think this is going to be not quite right oh I would have to get rid of a lot of that one I would take all of that off and that would be it in there I quite like that one. Let's audition a few more. I have this. I can trim those. I could have that. No, I don't really want that one. I know what I don't want. And then this is what I used yesterday for my vessel. And I was thinking, could I put that? I think that is really pretty. You're not going to get the lace on the other side, though. Now, I need to figure out how. I like that. That's the one that I like. So I'm going to put a snip here and I need to I'm going to cut that off because I can use that so that doesn't so that's going to come off that way that's see this is the issue it's at an angle there I think me thinks where's the front of my book is that the back that's the back so that's going to go on there like that around a funny way but it doesn't matter and then here that's it cut that off I'm just going to go for it I can repurpose it if I've done something wrong something different I haven't actually stuck a doily on the outside of a journal before but because this is bat botanical I just thought this would be super pretty on here I think I'll go like that so Wrap it round in its spot. Bring it up a bit. It needs to cover the, the tape. And just lift, do that. And then I'm going to start putting my glue here for sure. And a little bit there, I know it's coming out that way and down there. I'm so pleased with my reorganization, guys, on the shelves because I wasn't using any of these things because I didn't know where they were. Or I had them in a box or I didn't know. Yeah, I just wasn't pulling them out because they were too hard to get to. Or I couldn't remember. I couldn't see them. And so this way, in I've got them in those drawers that I showed you the other day. Um, I, I can now remember to use them. And I like that I'm getting glue all over the signatures where they're stitched in. So they're all really sticking in. 
and I obviously need to put more glue here but I don't know how far to go so I'm just going to first put it on I need to come up a bit higher and then I will add more glue see there was pretty good up here I need more and I'll need definitely need more there but I am very pleased with this I didn't know this was going to happen I need a bit of glue there, a bit more. So I had a bit of a revelation with my sister before. So in Australia, traditionally it was, it's a long weekend this weekend, and it was traditionally what they called in Australia the Queen's birthday, um, before the Queen died. And I always was convinced, my sister was having a, a giggle, that it was the, actually the Queen's birthday. Because, you know, she's been around since before I was born. She was queen be way before I was born. And so I thought it was actually her birthday that weekend. Now, our British friends, can you please let me know? Um, and so now it's called the King's King's birthday public we holiday weekend. So, And I said to my sister, but he doesn't have his birthday the same weekend as the Queen d did, does he? And she's like, it's not their actual birthday. I'm like, well, it's so bizarre that the Aussies... Can you tell me why? Why did they choose that weekend for the Queen's birthday and now it's the King's birthday? Long weekend. I know it's trivia, it's not important, but I'd just like to know because I thought it was actually the Queen's birthday. And then my sister and I were thinking, well, maybe it was Queen Victoria's birthday. And then they just kept it that weekend. I don't know. I really don't know. Now I need to press down with this. And then I need to come around where there's no glue. I probably could Google it and get my answer. Maybe I'll do that. No, you don't need to answer, guys. I'll just Google it and see why it was that particular weekend. Because, it, of course, it did exist before I was... That public holiday in Australia did exist before I was born. So I've obviously missed the origins of it. And, of course, it's just taken for granted that that is a public holiday. And so nobody really explained it. We just knew it because I can always remember thinking gosh the Queen's birthday is near mum's birthday because mum's birthday just went by and I was just thinking how how interesting is that okay it's no biggie to me if that design is not going on the right way blob of glue there too that's not going to help is it okay now also with these kind of covers they are i think they are definitely a printed old they're old but they're a printed marble cover so what can happen is if you wipe them too much with something wet it can start to wipe off because obviously it wasn't you know color fast which we know well with our inkjet printers so um yeah just be careful when you're wiping that you're not too vigorous with your wiping when you're wiping a an old marbled cover okay i'm going to have to add more i'm absolutely loving that make sure i get my glue everywhere there you go let's see how we're going now let's grab this Use it down. There we go, it's all stuck now. See, I'm only very carefully giving it a wipe. I'm not, you know, really going over and over and over and over and over again. I do like to use, as you may have noticed, the vintage embroideries quite a lot. Yonks ago, when I used to make my pouches and I used to sell zipper pouches and everything. I, mum was saying, talking about it yesterday, she said, oh, I never really have a huge in, um, collection of the embroideries. And I said, I always did because when I was making zipper pouches and things and I was doing markets and stuff here, and I used to sell them in my Etsy shop. I think, Mary, you bought quite a few of, of the last ones that I had left when I wasn't making them anymore. Um, I would stitch in because, it, you know, it's very time consuming, as you know, to do the um, embroideries and to keep my prices down. Um, I was stitching, I love that, I was stitching in um, the hand embroideries that I could get at the, the markets and things that I was collecting up 
you know, in my in my pouches and things. And so that way they did have the element of hand stitching, but I hadn't done it. Now I had this little piece here and I wondered whether I wanted to add something else, but I don't think so. I think I'm quite happy with that. I think I'm going to sit on that one for a bit. And I found these birds here the other day. Um, I think I'll sit on that one a bit and then just decide if I want to add something else. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to audition the bird. I don't mind the bird, actually. However, I think I'll sit on it because it is botanical. But no, I think I'm going to sit on it. You, sometimes you need to come back and look at things with fresh eyes. And so I always highly recommend that. When in doubt, walk away, come back tomorrow, have another look at it. And something, if anything, will come to you. See, that could be quite nice with a, a laundry label or a stamped bit. I think I'll keep that with the thing and um, and I'm going to look at it tomorrow. Yeah, could even sometimes stick on a piece of paper under. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? That's quite nice, actually. I quite like that. I'm going to come back to it with fresh eyes, I'm telling you. A laundry label, a little stamped piece. Or is it over overkill? What are your thoughts, guys? I'm going to pop that in there so I don't forget. I don't want to open this until it, it dries because it'll lift off. Um, but there we go. They are the journals ready for the fun to start happening. So we fixed up the faux pas on here. We put a lovely hand embroidery. Um, it's a gorgeous linen, that one. That's a lovely linen too. Bit of mattress sticking that has to go on there. And then these ones I did off camera. And I've used the brocades on these because these are the Italian ladies. So um, I kind of wanted it to be um, quite textile-y sort of thing. That's my thought anyway. So that's that one. And then we have the other one here. Beautiful Italian brocade fabrics. That's a bit like a tapestry sort of fabric. So there we go. So they are on, the, on their way. Um, I need to put a bit more glue under there, I think. Yep, they're on their way. They don't have anything to go in them yet, but we will, oh, it's double layered. We will get there. We will get there, we will get there, we will get there. So I will end off the video here. I will be back on the weekend, hopefully um, with these. And um, and we'll start, you know, looking at the pages, seeing what a little extra additions need to happen on the pages. That's the thing I like to do first. And then we can start doing pockets and then we fill the pockets. That's my process. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Thursday and I will see you again soon. Bye.